There's no such thing as objectivity. To some of y'all, that might sound like quite the bold claim, doesn't it? After all, it's a very frequently used term, either by critics or by people praising those critics, as a way to say that they're Gucci. And I get it. I get what they tend to mean with that too. Essentially, by far and away, it points to the idea that you take other viewpoints into account while expressing your own. A, I might not like this, but someone else who likes blah 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 might be into the aspects that blah blah blah, and so I can recognize its qualities in that sense type beats. But really, all that is is you still just expressing your opinion, but just in a nicer, less confronting sort of way. It's still just your thoughts and feels. Alternatively, it can refer to how such a critic might prefer saying I like this or I don't like this over saying this is good or this is bad. Which I also prefer doing. I think speaking matter-of-factly is cringe and weirdly authoritative, but it's still sort of saying the same thing. Like just makes it more about you seeming and good makes it more of a statement put on the thing itself, but at the end of the day it says the same thing about your feelings on said thing. It's just that the one you use also says stuff about you. But I get it. I too think it's always good to be as fair and considerate as can be when expressing your opinions, especially negative ones, but I also think it's very important to acknowledge and be aware of that that is what is being done. Thoughts and feels. Hell, I'm even a bit shaky on the concept of hard facts. Not in that chuddy, ignorant fashion. Like, if X percentage of scientists believe this, or if hella examples show a case of X, then I'ma take those X's at their word and roll with them. Though, those do still be those X's. A scientific consensus is still their opinions, and examples of proof are still perceived by those who see it as that. And so, we widely agree that these is facts. Of course, some people want conservative assholes can bang on about facts over feelings all they want, but I'ma just say that it takes a scathing lack of self-awareness to bring up facts with the sole purpose of supporting only your viewpoint and then act as if you bringing up said fact instantly rids you of subjectivity. It's fucking stupid. But basically, on the whole, what I'm saying here is that everything at the end of the day is only how you perceive it or believe it to be perceived by others. And yet, there's a lot of people, even in my comments, who would say something along the lines of I mean, yeah, sure, Evergrace OST is weird, but I can get how you can like it, but the Sonic Brotherhood OST, <laughs> now that's just plain bad music. The devs even admitted it was a mistake, so you can't use the same reasoning. Uh, the, the reasoning being that I enjoy it? Uh, okay. I think it might be time to unpack the worst video game music of all time! So, let's begin with Sonic Chronicle Brotherhood Chronicles. As you can hear, its music is certainly something. As are its visuals, the fact that so far it's the only game to have made Melon DS crash for me, the awful FMV animations, and generally everything else about the game right down to it being made by Bioware, which I find very funny. From skunk face to skunk music. So what had happened was, was that the music was made but could not be used. And thus, under massive time constraints, they took some existing midis and whatever the fuck else was left and dumped it into a sound font with no time to make corrections or to see if any of the instruments were assigned correctly. Technically, if you don't know what that means, uh, say, for example, that you have a song that sounds like this. Now, MIDI is essentially just data of notes. See this? This is MIDI. And that MIDI can tell any sound it's assigned to to play those notes, like these spooky hazy string sounds. This instrument data can also be encrypted into the MIDI file, but there's various standards of MIDI iterations over the years that all interpret that data slightly differently. Also, maybe you just selected the wrong instrument when exporting and simply didn't notice, like uh, a trumpet. Yeah, this is the legendary and infamous RE1 DualShock Edition basement theme, where either one of those exact things happened to it. Instrument go wrong. For what it's worth though, this could have been just an ordinary track, but instead it is now one of the most iconic pieces of video game music history, so hell 
yeah, RE1 clown fart basement theme. Hell yeah. Back to Sonic, anyway, as Wikipedia states it, Richard Jocks, longtime composer of the music for the Sonic series, composed some of the music tracks for Chronicles in the traditional Sonic style. You know, I'm, I'm not so sure about that one. As, indeed, with Sonic Brother Coles, the MIDI fuck-up also happened in a hurry. Many even. Most of these songs sound downright wrong. Keys being out of key, rhythms being dumpy, sparse instrumentation that sounds like it was written for shit that had a bit more body to it, thus filling out the emptiness. It is one giant technical mess. And I can defo hear some of y'all wonder, why the fuck do you like this then? Well, taste is all but a reaction. A reaction to things you often just so happen to be exposed to in the past. Everything you like now is a product of that. Colors, sounds, certain typefaces, or even people faces, or chord progressions, or mannerisms. Whatever you enjoy today is based upon the past. You don't so much choose to feel a way, basically. I, like you, hear or see something and either go, ooh, or Eh, or, yo, what the fuck? Fuck that shit. And you can have reasons, i.e. feelings become thoughts that you can communicate to a degree, but at the core, that is still really all that happened. And shit's hard to change as a result. I grew up on awkwardly sampled, crunchy hip-hop beats, dumpy, badly mixed bedroom electronic music, and games from the realm of ROMs, printed discs, and before I knew it, I was playing drag. <laughs> So of course, I'm going to be partial to garbage fuck shit. That being said, becoming more knowledgeable or aware or considerate of things that lie outside of your taste field can still be very helpful or healthy in regards to making you less of an asshole. Understanding why someone might like a thing you dislike is not a bad thing, even if you still keep on disliking it. For instance, noise music, a very purely experimental and abrasive genre. Music that can be entirely I don't like it. It's not my vibe. There's no grooves or patterns or melodies that my brain can latch onto and thus I feel nothing listening to it. But when talking about it one day, my homie Hazel simply explained why she does as catharsis. And suddenly I was like, oh yeah, dang, you're right. Cause that's what I feel when I see a game completely chugged to shit. The FPS reaching single digits while I'm pointing at the screen like, yeah, a let's go emoji type beat. What that did as well though was also got me to think more about why I don't like but do like and I think it's all due to context. I sort of like it when things break rules, subvert expectations or go against grains. To me, music that is solely experimental is doing exactly what it's doing. It's not breaking the rules of experimental music, it's just experimental music. So I don't feel that. Yeah. But with something like Sanic Brotherhood's OST, it's like, it's not supposed to sound that way. Games can't sound like that. Sure, some indies can, but a AAA ass, mainstream publisher ass, Bioware ass, Hollywood composer ass game on an official ass console? Fuck no, can't do that, but it does. And that's exactly what excites me about it first and foremost. It's anarchic, I guess. Uh, it's sort of a cringe way to describe it, maybe, but that's how it feels in my eyes, and has done since childhood. Purely experimental music, to me, is swinging around a baseball bat in a china shop where all the vases are already broken. But Sonic Chronicles Brotherhood... Oh ho 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 ho! Those vases are getting fucked up, baby! Plus, there's also just less abstract reasons for me liking it. The grooves on these punchy-ass drums, the scungy fart basses, just slam pretty fucking hard. Got some real dunk to them. Some real skunk. Some real boopin' ass qualities, you know what I mean? Prince from Katamari Dancing GIF. Shuffling little dude emoji. It's defo how it be, I'm afraid. I mean, these pianos as well are pretty cute. Colon, close brackets, as fuck. It just makes me happy. The game might be a technical disaster on all fronts, but god damn it, it has soul. And this is a vibe I feel regarding a lot of bad game OSTs. Perfection can be boring, but sucking hard can be infinitely fun to explore, you know? Always feels like there's more of a story to it, in my opinion. Or at least something worth talking about, or some complicated issues waiting to be unpacked. More than simply good or bad. 
Like I said, those clown farts are a fuck of a whole lot more known than most actual Resident Evil music is, so uh, yeah, let's get it. Let's talk about some bad game soundtracks. So this one is interesting as I think its status as what it is is solely based off of a bit of ignorance. Uh, you see, this is a song from Street Fighter 1 for Sagat stage. Man's from Thailand and, well, there's an instrument called a gamelan from Indonesia. But, but, but maybe the devs didn't know that and just conflated the two countries, though gamelan music sounds like this. So, that's what this is. Just done with tinny FM synthesis. But if you don't know that, as even the devs for some fucking reason did it, and they were a fuck of a whole lot closer to those countries than I figure most of you watching are, then this probably just sounds like the sound chip glitching or whatever, but no. It's a cool style of music that's defo worth checking out if you want something wholly different from most western musical style conventions. That was referenced here in amazingly scungy sound chip fashion. And I think that that is just neat. Fucking god. So this is, is all very blatantly out of tune, in it? It's a very recent one too, from a game called Future Arrow Racing S Ultra. It's on the Switch. And the music was made by the sole developer themselves. Now, I'm gonna just hazard a guess here and say that they weren't a musician or composer or producer, and thus, as many even actual composers also do, resorted to loops. Ready made song chunks like a drum loop, a little bass line, a little melody, or some vocals that you can layer and edit and reuse no problem as you see fit. Shit's totally legit and fine and probably way more common than many of y'all would think. Like, even whole normal-ass music artists use these. They're very commonly used in modern-day trap music for cool melodies. And during the late 90s, acts like the prodigy went fucking ham with them, but... Yeah, th this ain't no prodigy. I don't know what the intent was here, and I want to assume. I mean, it'd be easy to say that the composer had no musical ear and therefore couldn't tell that these loops was entirely out of tune, but who knows? Maybe they wanted something a bit more avant-garde. Experimenting with microtonal stuff is hella common in jazz. Even I did it for Umarangi. And that mystery is exactly why I fuck with this track. Besides, that bass has some groove to it. One could be so inclined as to get down to this shit, and maybe I am too. Though, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's probably enough of that. <laughs> it's not the best background music. Much better is this breezy, calm, chill little tune from Nagano Winter Olympics 98 for the PS1. That was very much like that year, with that sort of new age U2 era drum patterns and jazzy fusion -y psychedelic influences and cool breaks into jazzy digressions. Shit owns. Only a bit into the song, this happens. Oh my. Uh, this, once again, is one of those things where I have no idea if it's intentionally jazzy or not, because it very well could be. But given that a similar melody line appears later with a different instrument, I'm gonna say that this is a certified clown fart brotherhood moment. Whoever was composing this ended up assigning whatever hell instrument this is to the little solo they programmed or played. But fuck it, it owns. It catches you off guard and makes the song as a whole much more interesting than it would be if it just played its 90s jazzy fusion-y shit straight up. 
as there's loads of other songs that sound exactly like that already. There's legit something to be said for standing up. There's so many games out there, so many soundtracks, all fitting neatly into their little designated trend and time frame corners, and that's fine, but things can get samey or you can lose interest due to saturation. And so, having something bizarre like this happen out of nowhere puts this OST out of that corner with at least one awkwardly yet confidently placed foot. Proudly marching on as one of the bona fide PS1 greats, standing shoulder to shoulder with Gex Deep Cover Gecko, Breeding Stud, and Front Mission Alternative. So this is certainly some drum programming. Some really harsh, choppy drum programming that way later into the track opens up to this. God dang! Shit's composed by Ryo Arai, one of my personal heroes and not typically a game composer. Makes cool, housey music and really rough and scratchy breakbeats and he even did the backing beat for Bitch I'm Compressed. Bitch I'm Compressed. Got a little bit rape but I'm not depressed. And given that alternative is in the name, I think we can assume that Squaresoft wanted something really different for this one and different is definitely what they got. Which do be kind of a thing too. Uh, a lot of game music that's considered bad is often just experimental or weird. Most people who play games are into games and not hardcore into music. Well, most regular people aren't hardcore into music, so when they get hit with some left field stuff, they don't quite know what to do with it and thus reputations is gained. Which is absolutely fine, valid and understandable. Nobody can be an expert or fan of everything. Giving people shit for putting this OST on bad game music lists can get elitist quickly and I am not about that. What I am about though is this soundtrack. Arai is a fucking legend in my book and while I might not be able to play the game, I can listen to its soundtrack and you better believe that I have. If you are in the market for some offbeat house cuts with pounding drums and bass lines that go on whole entire journeys in the areas of synth pads, then this OSD is absolutely worth checking out. Also, check this shit out. San Francisco Rush's soundtrack sounds like a teenager with a copy of Fruity Loops fucking around with the default samples for the first time, and I used to be this kid, so I love this as a result. It's mixed like shit, vocal samples and orchestral stabs randomly exit and enter the track, and at some point this weirdly programmed bass line comes in. The grooves kind of stand. It has a shuffle to it, some motion. What's interesting too is that the PS1 version has a completely different OST that came out a month later, so I figured the devs probably knew. But in that, this holds as a uh, fuck it, whatever, let Bill do the OST type of soundtrack. Just some random ass person on the dev team with a copy of a doll winging it harder than anyone else ever could. Suppose it's worth noting that cuts like this were sort of common in the 80s. They had this thing called a fair light that was often rather shakily implemented, like in tracks like Owner of a Lonely Heart and shit. And so I figured that maybe instead of real amateur hour, it is actually mega boomer hour. I tried to research who and what exactly here, but I, I couldn't. Whatever Wikipedia says is unsighted and likely bunk and I don't want to play the game just to get to the credits and even VGMDB ain't got shit and they usually have it all. Oop, yeah, a, a real mystery for the ages this one, but I will keep listening to it recreationally either way.
Yeah. So uh, there's this game coming out called uh, fucking <laughs> called called In the Valley of Death. That's it. And I did the. It's coming out on the fifth of uh, October. And uh, I did the music for it. I did the music for it and the sound effects. I didn't make the game. But I did do that. I did the music for it and the sound effects. So out on Steam on the 5th. Uh, it'll be on Xbox too. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know when. But that'll be the thing. That'll happen. And so now you know. Yeah. Picture this, you're a dad, a dump truckin', hawk wildin' dad, who defo wears sunglasses a little too often, with a keyboard and a microphone. One day, you get contacted to make music for a game called Cruisin' Usa. Rushing to your home studio, you set up your microphone, forgetting to turn off your monitors, thus leaving a caked in echo effect, and setting the keyboard to clavinet, cause you about to get funky. Dad. Funky. And thus, you produce this once-in-a-lifetime masterpiece. That's my best guess, at least, as to how this wonderful little ditty came about. Not even true. The composer for this has done hella shit on hella series is over the course of many years as both that and as a sound designer, but in my head, I see the dad. The cool white dad who has issues he'd rather people not talk about, bump fucking and dumping tunes on his cheap Casio keyboard as he gets just that little bit too uncomfortably red in the sun. A true classic of game music. And I also think a pretty good example of where a lot of video game music was, and in many ways still is. As there's not exactly a whole lot of formal channels towards becoming a game composer. I mean, I am one and I just got an email one day. <laughs> That's all it took. I don't got no credentials. I ain't got shit. Nor do many of the game devs in other areas, let alone a keen ear for music when they're there to program or write, resulting in game OSTs that can vary widely and wildly in style, quality, or even production value, with composers off being these DIY one-man guy type persons, getting more freedom than composers in certain other media may have to have. Sure as shit would explain this at least, and it also most definitely explains the legend that you are about to see now. Actually, the game is fucking, but the music is amazing! <laughs> Ooh, ho, 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 death crimson time. I've spoken about it at length in this video, but in short, it's a light gun shooter brimming with incompetence, humor, and a keen eye for not giving a fuck about shit. The game is barely even playable, but its style, cutscenes, levels are all so fucking bizarre that it's absolutely worth experiencing in some form or another. And this goes for the soundtrack doubly so. Composed by Kunikata Watanabe, it is mostly really just a pretty great ass MIDI proc rock record, just with some sus instrumentation choices on the track playing in the first level, which sealed its reputation. This, of course, being skunk trumpets. Clearly, these trumpets and this, what I'm charitably going to dub accordion, sound ever so slightly out of tune while never quite going there. Shit's edging, essentially. All the while the goofin' trombone fat beat fills up the bass line, it, it certainly hits you in a fashion not many games dare to do. Just as with Nagano, though, I must say that this simply gives it hella personality, and also, look at the fucking game. <laughs> it fits like a glove. Plus, man just likes his music kinda goofy. Hell yeah. Other than that though, there's also this. Ooh. 
The game booting up with a vaporwave meme nearly two decades early, which further adds to the general mystique. But otherwise, like I said, it's pretty good MIDI prog. And I recommend giving it a peek, especially when performed by the legend live. The OST has many other bizarre instrumental choices and goofy digressions that give the impression that it's done sort of tongue and cheekily, but then you see the man and it's like, nah, no, uh, he's legit. He's genuine and entirely and proudly himself. Which is exactly what I'll say about the next game as well. So, remember that catharsis thing I mentioned, Hazel mentioning? This is that, but for me, as it is complete and total fuck. Aside from a steady drum rhythm, which kind of bends, there's really nothing else in this soundtrack that doesn't sound like it wasn't randomly generated. And many synth arpeggiators do have a random option, so it probably was as well. As to why? Well, the creator has stated that the game was essentially a test for his engine and sound compiler. Just to show that, yes, I can't make things run on this console. That does make you wonder why it was then released, but fuck it, I say. Sometimes you just want to show your proof of concept. It's fine. Scraps can be art too. Also, along with Val, this is one of the key pillars of Venezuela's game industry, which is very important. Socialism is when crazy bus Vuvuzela, and this is why it's good. But this could very well have been made on government funding, just like David Cage's games are. And compared to those, I'd much rather play this. It wasn't, however, but still, salute crazy bus, you mad raving legacy. Ooh, oh, bro. Jesus, Jesus Christ. I should probably hit you guys with something a little bit more normal now. Being Nobuo Goddamn Uematsu, one of the most acclaimed video game composers of all fucking time, and very bigly rightfully so, in my opinion. Fisherman's Horizon makes me cry whenever I hear it for no reason other than it simply being that pretty, and his boss themes come fucking buckets. Through those, in particular though, one can deduce that he is a huge fan of 70s rock. Tons of his battle themes is basically just Emerson, Lake and Palmer with a hint of bum dump in Deep Purple and one day, after years and years of interpolating songs he likes and making references, tributes and motifs up the ass, he finally got to work with one of his heroes. Ian Gillian, vocalist of Deep Purple. Uh, a good 20 or more years after his prime. <laughs> Yes! This is goddamn glorious, blessed, pure, sweet even. I love this. Cause I mean, uh, you can definitely tell that he's holding on for dear fucking life to sing in this key, and you can also tell that Nabuo clearly wrote the music with how he used to sound in mind, but gosh darn it, the instrumentation is so perfectly flat but still good, the lyrics are fucking dumb, the solos are over the top as shit, Uematsu going bonkers on that organ, and as a whole, it just oozes passion. Dreams being fulfilled in real time, and no amount of slightly awkward singing could take that away from him or me. Chidons! And the haters are cowards. So there's gonna be some songs that are worth mentioning that I simply don't have a whole lot to say about. Take this one, for example, from Suikoden 5. It's easy to be like, Lamau, what, but bruh, it, it, it's comedic relief music. Of course it's gonna sound dumb like this, it's meant to. Same with Crazy Chocobo from FF13 too. It's a joke. Uh, lighten up. There's also the whole ass Bubsy 3D soundtrack, which I plan to talk about in a later video, though. Frankly, I, I actually don't like the music in this game, and I will not defend this. Infamous is the KH2 Pirates level music, which... Sure, is a bit too staccato and non-epic sounding for what it is, but for what it is, I've never had any issues with it. I think it works within the context of the game as a somewhat more cartoony and uppity sounding version of the song. I like it. Then you have Yoshi's New Islands music. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm not a fan of this either. And of course... This 
sounds like Primus covering Dragon Force sarcastically, and while it's easy to make fun of it for it, it's worth noting that hella strange ass metal and rock from the late 80s and early 90s just sort of sounded like this. Primus, Green Jelly, The Melvins, Faith No More all sort of had this vibe, and seeing as this game is from the 90s and that the composer is called Todd Dwayne, which is the rough equivalent of him being named Dude Tubular, I, I, I think we could follow this under, yeah, this is just some experimental 90s bum rock, you guys, it's fine. I fuck with it. Certainly sounds better than how the game plays, uh, I can say that. And like poetry rhyming, we end back at the beginning of Sonic, who seems to be a constant in almost all my videos, but don't worry about that, it's not like I bought the Knuckles chain or anything. Well, uh, would you look at this? Would you look at this little boy? You look at this little guy, look at this little... Oh my god, just fucking focus, you piece of... That would be stupid. It's a series known largely for its incredible music. Right there in the first game, they hit it out of the park and have mostly been doing so ever since. Honestly, the only Sonic OST I don't like is the Boom one, simply because I do not care for it. It's boring, generic DreamWorks music and fuck that shit. But otherwise, even the bad Sonic music I tend to enjoy or find at least deeply interesting. Take the ear-splitting music from Sonic Battle, for example. This hurts! It has that GBA skunk to it, which, uh, thinking about it, easily could have dominated this whole ass video. Like, have you heard Rayman GBA? Anyway, there's also the Sonic Spinball Option song, which uses a rather harsh synth sound. A bit unorthodox, I guess, but that aside, that OST. Come on. Which is pretty much a Sonic thing in general, really. Technical mishaps or ideas flawed to the core that still get presented with a confidence and spunky energy that most series wish that they could have. So I think it's only fitting that the soundtracks from these games can mirror that in many ways. Similarly to how Crush 40 is sort of cringe, but also the most honest thing ever, it just works. As did Sega's online service called Sega Game Toshoken. You know, until it didn't. Upon which all of the games distributed through the servers were lost to the ages, including the puzzle game Sonic Eraser. You know, until it wasn't. Years later, in 2004, Sega dropped this bitch on their Japanese website, where eventually folks outside of Japan began to find it, having never heard of it prior. Fittingly, the game opens up with some sort of ancient tome. What could it mean? Uh, Tetris, apparently, and also music that sounds like this. So this one is really fucking bizarre as the whole soundtrack is composed by Masaru Setsumaru, someone who's worked on Sonic 3 and Jet Set <gasps> oh, baby. and Jet Set Radio and Fantasy Star, but as a sound designer. Yeah, he pretty much exclusively makes sound effects, and yet for some fucking reason he was in charge of the music of Eraser. Add to that, the fact that it was his first time working with the Genesis in general, having to figure out the notoriously hard to program for sound chip while doing something he wasn't doing normally, and you might begin to see how this ended up this way. Why it had to be that way though remains sealed away forever in the Tomb of Secrets. But. God damn, is it good. It's like three songs. First of all, there's this one with his head banging ass groove, crazy ass tonal digressions, and then bang, back to where we need to be, fuck shit up. Then you got the puzzle mode song with this stankin' ass bass line. This Chad walking ass unstoppable dude. This pussy slayer type beat. And then you also got this little wind jingle. But yeah, goddamn, I don't know, man. 
this seems pretty cool to me. Sure, the tuning of the instrumentation is a bit unorthodox, and you can certainly tell that this is amateur hour, but that in and of itself has a charm to it, I'd say. And as such, strong ass, smiling sun with sunglasses and grill vibes, that I can't help but wanting to do a little bit of stepping around the house whenever I hear it, you know? Nothing bad about it at all. Definitely not for a song off of a soundtrack listed among the worst video game soundtracks of all time. In fact, I'm beginning to think that this worst thing is actually pretty good. Sometimes, posting cringe is just a thing you need to do to find your true self. Or, or whatever the fuck. Look, I don't know. I wrote half of this as part of a other video. My next video, Mysterious PS3 Games, which is going to be very good. But shit seemed out of place, and so I expanded and made it its own thing. And I've, I've made my points. And I don't want to summarize what I said again, just to tie a bow around this bitch, because that would be too non-worst of me right now. Either way, yeah, that's the video.